screams. So, uh, thankfully, depending on what your opinion on the character is, we have thinned the herd of a good chunk of the young links. There's not uh, any of them. I believe, yeah, I don't in think Top Toast 32 is still winners, in but we Toast lost early. Toast yeah, lost early, in early. pools to class, but neither of those players are on our screen now. We've got Low One taking on Moist Goblin. Roy versus Wario, which we're going to be seeing a lot of in this bracket. We've got Gluto yep. still in, we've got Mugen still in, we've got Cola still in, and we've got Goblin right here. So we're going to be seeing a lot of these characters. Yeah, I mean, Roy being perhaps the most prevalent character in the current meta, if you go off of those sort of weekly posted statistics that Bernard Sloop and Orion put out. Yeah, big shout out to Bernard Sloop. Been there for a while, man. But yeah, Roy is probably pound for pound the most relevant character in the current meta. and. Wario, I mean, still up there, fallen off a little bit since his glory days, but still a threat to be reckoned with. I mean, that's one of the reasons why Low One has made it as far Ooh. as he had, but reverse snare, probably not what Goblin meant, but it's still damage. It looked like that was definitely supposed to be a jab back air setup. Did not find it, but like you said, still damage did give Goblin stage control, mm. and it's not too much longer until Goblin's able to follow it up with a back air. A great start to him, only having taken 68.9. Now up B out of shield is going to get him out of danger. It's a fantastic get off me off because it's fast and it's armored. Not a lot of characters have the ability to deal with that. So Goblin making great use of that already. We know we're going to see more of it going forward. And I like this right here from Low One pushing Goblin into the corner by just poking with these aerials because he knows that center stage not exactly where Ooh. you need to be to take the stocks. It's off stage that the magic will happen for Wario and he will get that first chunk taken out of Goblin who still has a nice lead right now. Yeah, Goblin is going to be able to get that up air bear to send Low One off stage again, but he gives up control of the stage. Low might make him suffer for that. Goblin tries to do these landing up airs again. He's been getting that set up pretty consistently, but this time Low is going to be able to escape with his life intact. Jab back air though. That's one of the big things about playing on Pokemon Stadium too, especially against a character like Roy, is that just getting killed cross stage is a lot harder because PS2 itself is so big, and then you have normal blast zones from the ledges as well. So Low One playing a chunky character like Wario gonna be continuing to hold on to this stock for a long time, up throw shouldn't do it, so Goblin going to continue the ledge trap now. This time you're noticing after a couple of interactions ago, Goblin no longer trying to chase low one off stage has realized Wario is so much better off stage than Roy is, especially because of his mobility. So he's not going to go for that challenge, instead just wants to hold on to that stage control because as soon as low one does make his way back onto the stage, he's going to be able to go blow for blow, pound for pound, just like that. 37%. And right back to the ledge with you too, using Wario's aerial drift to a great degree right there, low one. But Goblin has been doing such a good job of keeping track of him around these platforms, having a sword, a really big boon against Wario. And you can see that low one still struggling to take a chunk out of this second stock. It's Goblin with a big lead. Yeah, Goblin's been doing a fantastic job of waiting for low one to aggress on his shield with something along the lines of Nair, maybe down tilt like we just saw there. Either getting a quick up air out of shield or a quick up B out of shield. Either one of them has been getting him so much mileage, but low one is able to connect the last hitbox of Nair into the back air, putting Goblin off stage again. This ledge trap could be huge because if low one is able to take the stock full waft is now on the board as we've just passed that three minute mark so if he takes this stock here he's only a singular combo away from taking the game as well a goblin on the other hand just needs one jab oh, back no. air he went for something big probably to see if goblin would get aggressive but now without that waft and set up on the tech chase that's something that goblin never misses and moist will get that first Game one win here against low one in a best of five set Yes, now. so now that we have breached top 32, we do finally get our three out of five sets. We've seen far too many two out of threes by this point, <laughs> so we're ready for something new, and I think the players definitely are as well. Goblin taking a quick sip of water before getting into the next. That was a very strong showing in game number one, and I think they might have picked onto the wrong stage. <laughs> I thought you were about to say it was a very strong sip of water. It was and a honestly, very strong sip of water. For, for somebody in Moist Esports, I would hope so. Gotta stay you hydrated to go if that's your sponsor. You, you had to go there, didn't you? I did have to go there. All right, because, as long as you had to. Because it's Goblin. He is the man on stage and he's picking Roy, he's picking the Tekken music, which I am always happy to see. I have to gas up this guy because he goes out to basically every major right, and you, he performs every time. Not even just every major, you'll see Goblin at random regionals. I remember a couple months ago, I like he was in Kansas for some reason yeah. farming some regional there. He's, he's on that grind, he's looking for practice wherever he can get it and it shows because he's been at the top of his game for so long and isn't really showing any sign of slowing down soon. Mm -mm. And against low one, 
Again, it is trying to keep that pace up that will work against Wario. You don't want to let him play his own game. Won't get any sweet spots there on the double-edged dance. Sweet yeah. spot would not have KO'd this early, like you mentioned last game, Wario. A little bit chunkier than some other characters. But despite Roy's sometimes abnormal kill power, it wouldn't have done it there. Mm -hmm. Would have needed something a lot more intense, but meanwhile, low one looking a lot more comfy on FD now that Goblin isn't able to use platforms to juggle him. It just seemed like something that Goblin was super very toned into, and low one was having trouble landing with those platforms in the way. Now, not only that, his combo game gets to extend in ways that Goblin doesn't get to with no platforms. I pointed it out during the last game a little bit, but Goblin seems to have fully caught on to the fact that you don't want to challenge Wario off for stage. You want to wait until he's either on the ledge or on the stage with you because that's where Roy can go blow for blow with this kind of character. He's not going to be able to do it off stage where he's so easily gimpable. Just a singular fair, that would be enough to kill Roy at basically any percent should it catch him wrong. So Goblin, great recognition, great adjustment to the game plan because we saw him suffering earlier going off stage. Now he's just cool, calm, collected, and in control. Well, and the game plan needed to change too because you saw that at around the 120 mark, he was still going for those down tilts to set up for a tech chase, but Morio is floaty enough that he can fly off the stage at that point, doesn't need to get tech chase, whereas at this percent, this is a place where Goblin can go for a devilishly early stock with that 115 rage. But there it is once again, near the corner of the stage, you're not going to be getting tech chases from that down tilt, like you see oh. here, but good choice by low one. Yeah, that is the most brutal guessing game in the world. You get hit by a Roy down tilt, and if you guess wrong, you are going to lose your life. Now Quick resetting disengage. back into neutral. Yeah, great disengagement. Now using the bike to kind of set up a wall between himself and Goblin. I love this play from low one. Now has to pick up on the ledge trap, something that he hasn't been able to do against Goblin yet, but will come down with that aerial to take out his first stock behind by quite a significant margin. But then again, like you mentioned, with Waft available, it's not as big of a margin as it seems. It is the huge cliche of like you're playing a two stock game against Wario and that's not necessarily true because they still have to hit the confirm and that confirm was made decently harder in uh, some of the most recent patches we're moving like up tilt into waft is one of the easy ones and mm -hmm. uh, we already saw low one with a pretty important waft during oh. the last game and Goblin gets the wake up with dare I've not seen that in a while I normally when he tech chases he's doing the same thing that Cola does looking for either side B's or looking for a forward smash but that time he said well I can just bounce you off the stage up into the top lasso no matter what so you're done with that amount of percentage on low one, it's to be expected. So, very well played by Goblin. Now he's got low one stuck on the ledge again. That should have been a huge punish on the air dodge, but Goblin guesses wrong, and he follows it up with the waft. Low one brings us to a last stock situation. But with 65.6% .6 on him, Goblin could find something soon to take this out if he's not careful. Low one has to play so defensively here. Yeah, you have to find really big early combos. You can't do that against Roy, and I can't believe he had the drift to get all the way out of that grabs threat zone. But again, at the ledge, got to set up something big. Falling up there is, I can't believe Goblin was able to mash an aerial out fast enough, but all of a sudden, here comes low one with tons of momentum. Interesting up air there by Goblin in the back air. Just barely comes out in time, connects with the sweet spot in Goblin. Well, that was a lot closer than you might have thought it should have been, especially given the start that Goblin had to that game. So maybe he has to take a quick second to, to think before moving on into the next because, again, might have been a little bit too close for comfort. Yeah, I mean, we saw some great changes from Low One, and in particular, I think that the thing that ended up killing him was that Goblin kind of believed that he wouldn't pick up the big combos, and we saw some overextensions from low one. That's why we saw, for example, that back air come out in the middle of what looked like a low one combo, because low one is not quite hitting those high percent combos, and Goblin has been mashing those aerials out. But we did see at early percents, 54% off of just one opening. So back up Final Destination. We'll see if those adaptations can stick and if Low One can take it one step further. Yeah, an interesting choice to run it back to Final Destination this stage, of course. Lacking the platforms that most others in this game do, do have means that it is going to be much more difficult to escape disadvantage for both characters. And during the last game, we saw Low One being the one to abuse that much more frequently than Goblin. He was able to get so much off of Roy's lack of landing options in certain situations. So we'll have to see if he can continue that pattern or if Gob might be able to figure out just how to get his boots back on the ground. 
Ooh, and not going to quite get anything out of that full double-edged dance, but Boots on the ground is where Low One has actually found quite a bit of success. You see that while he has been playing very aerial, that is what Wario does. He's been sticking low to the ground so that he can react to whether or not Goblin is going to chase him up and do some air-to-airs. And now it's just one more solid hit, and Low One gets to take his first lead of the set. Wake up dash attack from Low One was a fantastic option there, too, because Goblin has shown himself uh, he's shown his hand, basically. He likes to just wait on the platform with a landing aerial so that he can catch the get up below one, recognizing that mixed up the timing and then came onto the stage and now has indeed taken the first stock lead of this set. Uh, catching Goblin on the whip right there. I mean, not respecting that grounded threat zone of Wario because you're always thinking about the aerial threat zone. And here comes that big early percent damage, catching Goblin on the landing. Like you said, Roy doesn't have the best landing options, has decent aerial drift, but not the best acceleration. And so when you catch him in those combos, there's not a lot that he can do to escape you. Tries to go deep with that run off fair, but it's not going to connect. Does catch the re-grab though with the down tilt. Low one is still going to be able to circumvent that, get back on the stage. And while holding onto this stock at 150%, we're gonna start Ooh. seeing Waft become a factor, but he is going to be taken. <laughs> I, I called it. Well, it was certainly going to be a factor, but Goblin got out of the confirm. So low one will definitely be able to find at least a half waft when we reach the latter stages of the game, unless Goblin starts running him over like we see now. Game is right back to even, Ooh. and he did wait for that air dodge, but good reaction by low one. And that's that Wario aerial, dr aerial drift, excuse me, coming into play in force. He's able to just react to, oh, hey, Goblin's holding an F smash. I'm just going to DI straight out so that I'm nowhere near him when that comes through. Mm. And now off of a missed tech chase, low one, right back into neutral, dash attack, not quite going to do it. Oh, though that shoulder bash, be. no. Too Great early. delay with the bike though to be able to make it back. Goblin was out for blood there on the aerial reverse. Back air comes through out of shield, has low one off stage again, but Wario, again, he has so, much, uh, so many resources to stall off stage with that bike being available. Very underrated recovery in my opinion. Like people don't talk about how, how strong Wario is just in that general situation. Yeah, it's tough to challenge him too because that corkscrew has such a big hitbox, but he does need to have access to the bike. So let's say Goblin is able to get a grab, toss him off stage again. Options become a lot more limited, but low one compared to that game one and the game two as well, doing a much better job of escaping these ledge trap scenarios. Goblin's really looking for that landing up air that did him so much work oh. during the first game of this set. He's yet to be able to find it. Sending low one off with the sour spot fair, the noodle hitbox of Roy's sword, and we're almost perfectly even here, and it's going to be low one with a down tilt dash attack to take the stock. Goblin might be in a spot of trouble here if he can't take this stock soon. Wario with rage, especially with, like you said, half off becoming available soon, could be a recipe for disaster. Should be up now in any case, so Goblin really needs to seal something out on this ledge trap, which again, low one's been doing a great job of circumventing. Up throw won't do it without any rage, so we'll go at it again here at the ledge. The low one again with a daring escape. Oh. It takes a bunch of up airs. The week into the suite is a confirm for Goblin as we go into the last stock. I really like that idea from Goblin. You don't see like sour spot up air and the sweet spot up air used too often, but with the uh, the correct read on how they're drifting, it can very much work out. Goblin showed it to us right there. Now taking the percent lead with the double nair. Ooh, really full sending with that forward air too. Put himself in a corner. Very lucky to be out of oh. it. This is where it gets scary last. He jumped, and I was very scared for Goblin for one reason there. He jumped out of disadvantage, which means he was in the air above Wario with zero resources. And that is probably one of the worst positions in the game to be. Gets the jab. You saw he tried to up be out of shield there, but was unable to find it. Ooh, but this juggle game is great, waiting for the air dodge. He's got coverage for everything. No bike for low as well. He has to use oh. the walk to recover. I love the idea. And now, probably the game plan has shifted to down tilt dash attack to take this game instead. Down tilt dash attack shouldn't kill. Uh, okay, I was right. Okay, yeah, was you're, about, right, you're right. I was about to have to eat my words, but I was pretty sure it wouldn't kill at that percent. Goblin. Oh! oh! The bike comes through again. Goblin barely holding on. He almost got the Kazuma Kiryu is barely able to make it back up on stage, throwing the bike yet again. Goblin has to air dodge to get past, but low one is unable to punish it and wasn't ready for that option. Stuck on the ledge against Goblin, he looks for the sweet spot. Fair rolls behind to try and cross him up, but just holding shield, playing defensively right now. Has to be so careful around these down tilts because he Ooh. knows what the kill confirm is, and Goblin finds the bear. It's still not enough. These guys are trading kill screens like crazy. Warrior's just so heavy. I can't believe that low one's still holding onto this stock, and his spacing has gotten so good, even in this situation. Is that bite. It? 
The chop should be able to do it. Goblin's not mashing at all, so it will certainly get him off stage. Low One is standing up and taking a breath because it was a hell of a stressful game three. And the interesting thing is, too, that I think Goblin could have mashed out by that point. I think Low One recognized that Goblin had already given up <laughs> and was just continuing to chomp for it's good disrespect. measure. <laughs> but we we had four KO screens there. Three of them belonged to Low One, one of them belonged to Goblin. We saw the uh, <laughs> the dash attack at ledge, then the bike at ledge, then Goblin's back air, and then finally the chomp to throw off stage. And that was the real one. The rest of them were all liars. As they say, quality over quantity. I had three and you had one, so that means I'm the winner. So low ready. one, getting that first win, that's really big, even if you have to play it out two times on Goblin's counterpick. I think that we have seen amazing adaptations from low one, particularly on escaping Goblin's ledge trapping, but that could all change with these platforms available. Yeah, but I do like that Goblin is running us to a stage with platforms because we pointed it out on the 2FD game. He was struggling to land a little bit. That's where low one was making a good chunk of his percentages, mm. was just continuing to juggle Goblin. Now he's got those platforms to reset on, and he's also got those platforms to extend his own combos on. That's, I believe, no jump. It is actually jump for low one. Did have to burn the bike to get back on stage safely, but still playing within, well within the margins of Goblin right now. But it's basically just hits trading back and forth. Nobody's really throwing a haymaker here yet because I think they both recognize how important it is to get a good read oh. on this stage. And I can't believe that caught the cross up. Yeah, that was an interesting scoop on the back hit box up, up smash. And that's going to put Goblin in a much better situation Next solid connection should KO. Is able to air dodge straight through that though. Mm. Crosses up, gets the back air, and Goblin takes back the lead. Kind of reminiscent of the way that Goblin had difficulty getting a kill without the down tilt. Uh, tech Chase confirms we saw that Low One didn't have enough stage to actually get down tilt into dash attack. Goblin was able to air dodge to the ledge, like you said, and now only 89%. This is rather livable against Wario, and in fact, look at him rack up the lead. He's about to lap that percentage. 69.8% on low one. Not going to be dying yet, but Goblin has shown himself to be a, a little bit of a, an optimizer in terms of KOs, but it is going to be low one going deep off stage. You said he wasn't in the danger zone, but that was Oh, oh Kenny Loggins! Smash, Jeff Smash, baby! I love to see it! He is in the danger zone. I'm watching Top Gun right now, and maybe Low One is the one about to be the Top Gun because he's still got this chance at the comeback. 57%. 503 like said. on the clock, though, so Half Waft is now up. Yeah, that's a big, big thing for Low One. Probably not going to get to use two offs. In fact, there's the flash right there to get that Waft available. Goblin, though. Oh, great get up attack. Yeah. You saw him charging that D Smash because he expected the roll from Goblin because he has been showing roll on ledge quite a bit throughout this. Now it's just a drift back to the ledge. Low One has done that a lot just to give himself a second to breathe because it's hard to find that against Roy's. And Goblin, he will stay up in your face all game. In fact, he's only got to get one more solid hit. Jab into back air perhaps could do it. And boy, was he looking for a statement finish. Yeah, after that, Jeff Smash connected. Low One has really struggled to get himself back into this game. Completely lost all momentum. And Goblin is just running with it. Tries for the dare out of shield. Instead, it is just going to be a short hop fair as a get away from me. F tilt comes through, he's going to chase Goblin, but is mixed up by the high recovery, so Goblin does manage to make it back on stage, trying for this jab on shield. And I would not be surprised to see Low One going into the corner like that. Again, just wants a moment to breathe with the shield so low. Goblin not DI'ing straight into the corner, so it's anybody's game with that waft available. Right, it has to be so, so careful, but we have seen Goblin pretty efficiently avoiding the wafts throughout this set so far. Going to be trying to get this KO before it even becomes a factor. 145% though, that means 5% away from full rage, and full rage with waft means it'll kill just about anyone, just about anywhere, mm. and that's going to be jab up air to take it out. 3-1, congratulations to Goblin on that first win here in top 32 of Glitch Infinite. Uh, moving on to winner's quarters, and just really well played overall. I think that Low One really figured out how to play on Final Destination, but when those platforms came through and oh, when Goblin gets you in the corner, it is so hard to escape from the wrath of that sword when you can't just utilize that Wario Aerial Drift to go anywhere. It ends up being his game to win. Fantastically played in general, and like you said, that is going to be Goblin moving on to Winner's Quarter Finals where he will battle it out for a top eight qualifier. Now, I am trying to look through the Smash GG to figure out what set we have up next, and 
There are a lot of them on here, so I have no idea what's coming up next. It's going to be one of many, many exciting sets I see over on the mainstream across the stage from us. We got uh, we got our friends DeBuzz and B 